please remain standing. Please remain standing for our national anthem. seated. I declare this convocation is now open. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in thanking Professor Charles Savage for leading us in the singing of the National Anthem and the Zanesville Memorial Concert Band for their beautiful music. Good evening. I am Dr. Hannah Nissen, and it is my honor to serve as the Associate Dean of Academic Affairs for Ohio University Zanesville. We are very pleased to have you with us this evening for our 2019 convocation. During the course of the academic year, there are several days that are the most exciting and meaningful to me and to many others. The first day of a new school year, and certainly graduation day. Those special days never get old or routine, no matter how many of them we've witnessed. As we prepare to celebrate tonight the academic achievements of the graduates in 13 bachelor's and four associate degree programs, we are reminded that the educational programs they have completed result in an Ohio University degree steeped in more than 21 decades of history and academic rigor. That history is blended with the currency of the changing times and business and industry needs to assure that we prepare a dynamic and flexible workforce of the future. While the official conferral of degrees takes place through Athens, we value the commitment our students make to accomplish their educational goals while also attending to family and work obligations. Celebrating with our graduates and their families in Zanesville is very important to us. Being a catalyst for preparing you to enter or advance in your respective fields, we are proud to be part of your past and of the future that you are yet to experience. As you walk across the stage tonight, be proud of your perseverance and persistence in completing your degrees. We are proud of your accomplishments and we congratulate you. We also recognize the support you received along the way. Likely some of those who provided that support are here with you tonight. To the mothers, fathers, sons, daughters, and other family members and friends who are gathered here, thank you for coming to celebrate with your graduate. Graduates, please stand and give a high five, a smile, and a wave to those who come to share your special moment. <laughs> <laughs> and
And now, it is my pleasure to introduce the platform party. As I read your name, please stand. Dr. Jeremy Webster, Dean of The Ohio University Zanesville. Dr. Dev Poling, Academic Division Coordinator. Professor Pam Seelover, Director of Nursing. Mr. Jason Howard, Director of Student Services. Mr. Ron Welch, our guest speaker this evening. And Kerrigan Capps, our student speaker, who is graduating this evening with a Bachelor of Arts in Psychology. We are pleased to have three members of the Ohio University Regional Coordinating Council in attendance this evening also. They are seated on the platform with us. The members of the council serve and assist the campus dean and our campus in many ways as we constantly strive to grow and improve. Those members with us this evening are Michael Bullock, who is our chair, Diane Jones, and Shannon Nesbeth. Please applaud for these folks. The platform party may now be seated. And we have one additional guest who wanted to be with us this evening, but couldn't be here in person. Please turn your attention to a special video greeting from Ohio University President, Dr. Dwayne Nellis. Congratulations, graduates. As president of Ohio University, and on behalf of our fine faculty and staff, I'm delighted to welcome family, friends, and most especially our graduates to today's ceremony. As we near the end of our time together, graduates, I ask you, who do you want to be after today? I hope your time at Ohio University has made that answer a bit more clear. But know that the answer today may not be the same answer in five years, 10 years, 20, and really, that's okay, because the world doesn't stop evolving, and neither should you. Your professions will continue to evolve, and you must continue to evolve too. Never stop learning, and still a curiosity and thirst for knowledge in your children. Raise the next generation to be kind and compassionate. Employers will always be looking for critical thinkers, good communicators, collaborators, problem solvers, leaders, these skills you acquired right here at Ohio University. So take your lessons, your new skills, and use them for good. Congratulations on receiving your degree, and welcome to a very special group that is more than 230,000 strong Ohio University alumni. That was a surprise. I wasn't expecting that. Um, and now, please welcome to the podium the Dean of Ohio University Zanesville, Dr. Jeremy Webster. Congratulations to the class of 2019. On behalf of Ohio University, I welcome you, your family, and friends as we celebrate this significant achievement. You have met the university's academic requirements, but as students, undoubtedly, you have tackled many obligations along your journey to achieving this milestone. As you reflect on your time as a student, let's consider some of the challenges you may have faced. Please stand and remain standing if you experienced or can relate to any of the following. If you received financial aid, support from grants or scholarships. If you worked full or part-time while going to school. If you're a parent or other caregiver of a family member. If you commuted 30 minutes or more to attend class. And if you ever just had a hard day that you needed to get over. <laughs> Some students might use the excuse of working, not having funding, too many responsibilities, or too little time to complete a degree. You are to be commended for not allowing these barriers to stop you from imagining the possibility of graduation. Let's congratulate our graduates one more time for persisting to accomplish their goals. Thank you. Thank you. 
The textbooks you read, the exams you took, and the related class discussions prepared you to enter the world of work. I am confident that in addition to the curriculum, there are many activities that prepared you for graduation. By a show of hands, how many of you did some form of field placement, clinicals, an internship, student teaching, or other real life experience during your college career? Almost all of you. That's impressive. In my view, the liberal arts and general education courses that you have taken are critical to a student's development. Those courses teach critical thinking skills and set us on a path to learn to learn. With that said, the real world experience of those field placements and clinical experiences have prepared you to take the first step toward meaningful careers. These opportunities are made possible because of our community partnerships that include local healthcare facilities, pre-K through 12 school systems, agencies, and businesses and industries. Such partnerships are what make regional campuses truly special. Such partnerships help to ensure that Ohio University Zanesville graduates are well prepared to enter their career fields with experience and confidence. I invite you to stay connected to this campus after today. We would hope that you will become fu welcome future interns to work with you and that you will return to campus to give back to future generations of learners. As you walk across the stage this evening, we hope you will remember your time here and the relationships that you have established with our faculty and staff. As you contribute to our community through employment and service, know that we are extremely proud of each and every one of you and so pleased that you made the decision to choose Ohio University. Welcome to the family of Ohio alumni. I wish you all the very best and thank you. Each year, we ask our faculty and staff to nominate students to be considered for giving the student address at convocation. Numerous deserving students are nominated, some of them more than once, so the selection process is often quite challenging. Our student speaker this year is Kerrigan Capps. She is a 2016 graduate of Philo High School. She began attending classes on the Zanesville campus her junior year of high school as a College Credit Plus student. As she was preparing to graduate from high school, she knew Ohio University Zanesville was the perfect fit for her. She had already established an interest in our psychology department. In addition to pursuing her psychology degree, she also served as a supplemental instructor and tutor in Spanish, statistics, math, and psychology. Dr. Frank Lociavo, who nominated Kerrigan for this honor, writes, Kerrigan is one of the brightest, most promising students I have ever met over my 20-year career at Ohio University Zanesville. In the classroom, Kerrigan has been first rate. I first met Kerrigan when she enrolled in my statistics for the behavioral sciences course. It was fun having her in class because she pushed it to a higher level. She asked sophisticated questions and appreciated sophisticated answers. I consider myself very fortunate to have worked with Kerrigan because one day I suspect she will go on to accomplish great things. With accolades like this, there is no doubt that this outstanding graduate will imagine amazing possibilities as she heads off to Kent State University in the fall to pursue a doctorate in experimental psychology. Please join me in welcoming Kerrigan Capps, Ohio University Zanesville's 2019 Convocation Student Speaker. Good evening, everyone. I am honored to be before you today and want to welcome all of the faculty, family, friends, and graduates to the Convocation Ceremony for the Class of 2019. Today marks not only the day we have officially completed our degrees, but for most of us, the day we will never have to struggle our way through another FAFSA application again. Before I begin, I want to take a second to mention something that happened just a few days before. Many of you may have heard of the accident that occurred on Route 22 in South Zanesville that took the lives of three people. 
One of the lives taken was Deputy Zach Smith, who was a friend of mine, and many of you may have known him or the other victims. In times like these, all we can do is keep those who are affected by these tragedies in our thoughts and prayers. Since I am missing his calling hours to be here today, I would like to take a moment of silence to honor my friend, Deputy Zach Smith, and the other lives taken by this horrific event. Thank you. Upon receiving the news that I was nominated to speak at graduation, I of course felt grateful to the faculty who chose me, but I also remembered how much public speaking is terrifying. On one hand, I was nervous to be speaking in front of so many people, but I was more so concerned with coming up with some astounding speech you might all possibly remember and even be inspired by. When I think of the typical graduation speech, I imagine the speaker quoting famous philosophers or talking of key people in a field that have made monumental statements that are eloquent or moving. I personally am someone who tends to be more inspired by people who I relate to or am similar to, rather than those who have been coined a genius or people whose names can be found in a textbook. Therefore, I am not going to stand here today and start quoting Maya Angelou or Helen Keller or Emily Dickinson. I wanted my speech to be more authentic and personal to me and to be something everyone in this room can take something away from. This was actually the first paper I refused to send to anyone to have checked or revised just so I would be sure that these were my words and exactly how I would say them. Therefore, I will finally get to the point and I'm going to tell you a story about a friend I had in high school. She is someone I knew since middle school and I won't say we were best friends, but she is one of those exuberant and outgoing people. For anyone who knows her, it is hard not to consider her a friend. While in high school, she excitingly did anything she was passionate about, like starting a YouTube channel, getting a matching tattoo with her dad, going to California with her best friends to visit Harry Potter World, and she even attended OUZ for our senior year of high school, as did I. Our senior year was the 2015-2016 year, which may have been many of today's graduates' freshman year. You might be thinking, okay, that's a lot of teenagers in high school, what are you getting at? Well, another interesting fact about her is that she has been diagnosed with type 1 diabetes and cystic fibrosis since birth. For those who may not know, cystic fibrosis is a genetic disorder that affects the lungs and digestive system. Cystic fibrosis is a life-threatening disease with no cure. Those with cystic fibrosis have a shorter lifespan, whereas the latest age they may live to see is their 40s. Now, consider everything I said before and put it in a context of the knowledge that you will not live as long as your peers. Her vivacious spirit resulted in a considerable amount of our high school peers having no idea of these struggles that she faces, like being in and out of the hospital, worrying about getting her medications at sleepovers, having a double lung transplant by the age of nine, making her the youngest person in Ohio to do so, and being on the list for another. On March 26, 2016, she passed away after a long few weeks in the hospital due to complications from cystic fibrosis. She was barely 18 years old when she died, just a few months out from high school graduation. She was thinking about majoring in psychology at OUZ, and she would have been graduating here today with all of us. Shortly after she passed, I remembered struggling with the idea of how unfair and what is the point of anything. <clears throat> I could not understand how she could go on pursuing these major things in life, like a high school diploma, a college degree, or even think about having a career knowing that her odds of attaining these things were highly unlikely. <clears throat> she was just a couple months from high school graduation. In my mind, I thought, what a waste of 13 years to not even get that degree, diploma. Now, sharing the story with you is not to make you sad or to tell you that you need to be more grateful for the life you live. What I am trying to share with you today is what I learned from her story and to show you that her life is not so much different than ours. Yes, she did have this thing, and this thing told her she would not live a full life like everyone else. But is anyone really guaranteed a future? You have heard the cliches, live like you are dying, 
or if tomorrow was your last day. I instead want to shift gears away from death by comparing it to something very similar in many college students' heads, failure. Sometimes failure can be crippling. We can be so afraid to fail at something that we choose instead to not even try. As you can imagine, over the last year, I've been dealing with all the things involved with applying to grad school. The application, taking the graduate record examination, which is basically the ACT for college, but way more expensive. Creating a CV and writing a personal statement. While spending the majority of my time working on these things, I was well aware that these grad schools would only be accepting one student per faculty member. So many times I thought, this is going to be such a waste of time. I probably won't get in, I should just quit. Thank goodness I had a lot of people supporting me and encouraging me to keep going, and it all worked out in the end. My point is, today is a huge accomplishment for all of us graduates, but it is just the start of a future that we have no idea what it entails. My friend also had a future where she had no idea what it entailed. She did not let this cripple her. I encourage everyone today, not only the graduates, but everyone, to live in the present without letting the fear of failure keep you from pursuing anything you are passionate about to feel proud of all you have accomplished, and to feel confident, confident while making decisions for your future, no matter how unpredictable this life can be. Once again, congrats to all the graduates today, and thank you to friends, family, and faculty who have helped us reach this celebratory day. Thank you. Our guest speaker this evening is Ron Welch, who is a 1990 graduate also of Philo High School. <laughs> he received a Bachelor of Arts from The Ohio State University in 1994. He received his Juris Doctorate from the University of Toledo College of Law in 1997. Ron has served as a prosecutor for his entire 20-year legal career. He has been an assistant prosecutor in Muskingum County since 2005. Prior to that, he was the director of the abuse unit in Franklin County. During his career, he has tried several hundred cases, including murder, rape, major drug offenses, child abuse, domestic violence, and human trafficking. Ron has worked in conjunction with child advocacy centers and child fatality review teams in developing protocols for the investigation and prosecution of child abuse. Cases Ron has prosecuted have been featured on Bill O'Reilly, Fox and Friends, and Dateline. He has advised law enforcement at local, state, and federal levels regarding the investigation of child abuse and sexual assault. He has provided training to law enforcement, medical professionals, and public service attorneys. Training areas have included all aspects of prosecution. Ron regularly speaks at local colleges and universities, as well as local civic organizations on issues related to various aspects of the justice system. I am pleased to welcome him to Ohio University and introduce him to you now, Ron Welch. Good evening, everyone. I would like to congratulate all of you on your accomplishment. What you have achieved is no, false, no small feat and deserves to be recognized and celebrated. I think back to a time where I've been unfortunately reminded was a long time ago. And speaking with Kerrigan, I was talking to her about being a graduate of Philo High School and discovered that some of my classmates were her teachers. <laughs> But it is refreshing to be able to talk to people who have so much in front of them. When I was first asked to address you for this event, I wasn't certain whether or not I wanted to do it. It took me a few days to respond. And the reason it took a few days was because I didn't know what I would say. What could I talk about that would be meaningful? And I told my family about it, and my wife was proud, and my children were excited and thought that it was cool that someone wanted me to speak on such an important day in their life. And it got me to thinking about what education means to me and what impact it has had on my life. And the reality is that education changes the world. 
How does education change the world? Might be what you're asking. Let me tell you how it changed my life and how I believe it has helped change the life of others. My dad dropped out of high school the first day of ninth grade. My mom finished the 11th grade and dropped out. No one in my family had ever thought about going to college. I was the fifth of seven children. The idea that someone from our family, from a very meager background, would someday go to college was a foreign idea. But I went to kindergarten, and they give you those tests that you start out with, and I scored pretty well on them. And they told my parents, and then I started to get decent grades, and my parents thought that maybe I'd be interested in going to school. Well, it meant a lot to me that my parents, when they found out I wanted to go to college, and I don't remember when that thought even occurred to me, but I know from the minute that I said I wanted to go to college, that they gave me undying support. They never questioned how it would be paid for. They just knew that they would help me do whatever they could. And for a family of meager income that has raised seven kids, there wasn't a lot to be given. But what there was, my parents gave me. All of you have someone that has supported you through this venture, whether it's family or friends. They have believed in you. And you are going to have an opportunity to change the world. So how did going to college change my world? As a result of going to college, I had earned the opportunity to go to law school. And when I went to law school, two major things happened. First and foremost, I started dating my wife. And second, I found something that I knew I, that I, knew I wanted to do as a career. And both of those things have turned out better than I could have ever imagined. Getting an education has allowed me to work in a job that I think changes the world. The work I do, I firmly believe, helps our community. It helps our community be safer. I have the opportunity to help people when they've been victimized. I get to protect people from criminals that poison our streets with drugs, that profit from people's weaknesses, that harm the elderly and children. And it may only happen one case at a time, but my education has given me an opportunity to make the world better and to change the world. Education also changes the trajectory for generations of families. I was the first in my family to go to college, but my children have grown up not understanding anything other than as they go through school, this is the next step. Their next goal after high school is to sit where you sit today. And they will pass that on to their children and their children and their children. Maybe someone in that chain invents something fantastic or discovers a medical breakthrough or becomes a world leader. I don't know that that's going to happen, but I do know that because I had the opportunity to get an education, by accomplishing what we are here to celebrate, you have taken the initiative to pursue an education. And with that education, you have the opportunity to go forward and change the world. But tonight isn't the conclusion of your journey. 
It's just the beginning of many great things that you can do. No matter the field you pursue, the job that you have, there are three things I'd like you to take away from this address tonight. First, be the best you can be in your profession, your field, or your job. Second, don't be afraid to be a leader. And third, do your job with integrity. And I want to talk about each of those. So let's talk about being the best that you can be in your field, in your profession, or at your job. Notice that I didn't say be the best in your field, profession, or job, because only one can be the best. But everyone can be the best that they can be in their job, field, or profession. Being the best means you never stop improving, you never stop learning, that you're always striving to be better. You will be someone that finds solutions to problems. You will treat people with respect. You will be there when your coworkers need you. If you're not the boss, which none of you are going to start out as, you will be the one that the boss goes to when something needs done, and they will have confidence that you're going to do it right. These are all things that if you do them, maybe one day you will find out that you are the best at what you've chosen to do. The second thing I mentioned is not to be afraid to be a leader. And too often people have the opportunity to be a leader, but they're afraid to seize that opportunity. You don't have to be the boss to be a leader. You can implement new ideas. You can provide solutions or problems. You can bring a positive attitude to a tough situation. I've read dozens of books on leadership, and I'm not the boss, but I know that there are times that people count on me to be a leader. Victims of terrible crimes, their families, and the community do not care if I am labeled as a boss. What they care about is that when the time comes and I am before them, that I have the qualities of a leader. This is going to happen to you also. Whether it's a patient, a client, a coworker, when you interact with someone, if you can help them and get the job done, they won't care about your title either. Never shy away from that challenge. You don't have to read dozens of books on leadership. And I know you're probably tired of reading. But at some point, pick up a book on leadership, any book, and it will serve you well. It will only prepare you better for the time that you are asked to lead. And do your job with integrity is the last thing I would like you to take away from this address. Never compromise your integrity. There are going to be times when doing the right thing involves taking the most difficult path. My job as a prosecutor isn't just to get convictions. The job of a prosecutor is to do the right thing every day for the right reason. That might mean dismissing a case against someone who in my heart I know is a bad person and they're going to do bad things again. But if the proof isn't there, it's what I have to do. It might mean asking a jury to sentence someone to death because they've been convicted of a murder. It's always a balancing act, and justice demands it. Your job's going to demand it, too. 
Every day someone is upset with me for prosecuting a case that they don't believe I should have or for not prosecuting, prosecuting a case that they felt that I should. They think that someone received too harsh of a sentence or too easy of a sentence. Sometimes the decisions are easy, but sometimes they are not. And the easy decisions aren't the ones that are going to test you. It's the difficult decisions that will determine your integrity. If you do the right thing for the right reason, no one should fault you. But undoubtedly, someone will. But what is going to matter is can you look at yourself in the mirror and say, I did it for the right reason and it was the right thing to do? Because if you can, then you have done all that you can do. Education is the basis for so many things that are good in the world. Use what you have learned to unite people, not divide them. Use what you have learned to have a discussion, not to argue. Use what you have learned to listen to the ideas of others before you condemn them. Each and every one of you will have thousands of chances to change the world. How you interact with customers, patients, students, or co-workers makes a difference in the world. Knowledge affords you the opportunity to inform people, to influence them, and to help them be the best they can be. You should be proud of everything that you have accomplished and appreciative of those that have helped you get to this point. Don't waste the opportunities that you have to make a difference. Your time isn't the future. It starts now. So what are you waiting for? Go change the world and make it better. Thank you. Now, the time for which we have all been waiting, I ask the graduates to please rise. Dean Webster, I ask that you please return to the podium. Dean Webster, members of the council, faculty, staff, and distinguished guests, I present to you the candidates for graduation in the class of 2019. On behalf of our distinguished faculty, I'm pleased to inform you that all of the candidates are in good standing and have completed all requirements for their degrees. Accordingly, I request that the degrees for the class of 2019 be conferred. Graduates, as a symbol of the completion of your degree, please take your tassel and move it from left to right. And at this time, Dr. Poling and Ms. Seelover, please take your place at the podium at the entrance to the ramp. We will begin the conferring of degrees. Oh yeah. You guys can sit.
wait till I say your name. Master of Business Administration, Andy F. George. Master of Education, Danielle Lee Mathers. <laughs> Bachelor of Arts, Sierra Montana Browning. <laughs> Kerrigan Page Caps, Magna Cum Laude. Shayla Friend. Mackenzie Jo Gibson. Mackenzie Dawn Howe. Austin Caleb Lafferty. Elizabeth Murray Valent. Bachelor of Criminal Justice. Austin Wayne Gilliger, cum laude. Joshua, Joshua Asher Martin, Magna Cum Laude. <laughs> Bachelor of Science in Applied Management. Dakota Shane Baker. <laughs> Chelsea Alexandria Blanchard. Also an associate in arts. Colton Stone Curry. <laughs> Melissa A. Hahn. Michelle Illing. Montana Thomas Mintz. Sarah Kate Paxson. Brittany Nicole Priest, Magna Cum Laude. Lori L. Rushevix, Cum Laude. Bachelor of Science in Communication. Taylor Adrian Gormley. Bailey Jo Hazlett. Leanne Nicole Hinkle, Magna Cum Laude. Eric Matthew Taylor. Bachelor of Science in Education. Caitlin Janelle Bell. Summa cum laude. Whitney Don Bobo, summa cum laude. Hannah 
Marie Cabanis. <laughs> Bailey Elaine Jose, magna cum laude. <laughs> Andrew Paul Heronic, cum laude. Jackie Lacey, summa cum laude. <laughs> Emily Rose Mann, cum laude. <laughs> Leanne Nicole Yulbrick, summa cum laude. Isaac Clayton Warden. <laughs> Vanessa Tyrese Wooten, summa cum laude. <laughs> Bachelor of Science in Health. Sydney Gabrielle Paxson. Bachelors of Science in Nursing, Kiri Lee Ballantyne, cum laude. Miley Marie Barnhart. Rachel Ann Blue. Marissa Pearl Bishop. <laughs> Justin Edward Chafin, cum laude. <laughs> Lacey Elizabeth Chavalier, cum laude. Courtney M. Klontz. <laughs> Ashley Lene Croston. Croston, the Croston. Croston. Emily Grace Durkis. Bachelor's and Associate in Science. Kylie M. Ditto, magna cum laude. <laughs> Carrie Ann Dooley. Emily R. Engel, magna cum laude, bachelor's and associate in science. <laughs> Haley Finley. <laughs> Olivia Jo Henwood. Tiffany Marie Hopkins. <laughs> Natasha Nicole Langwasser. <laughs> Aubrey Noel Lyons. Ashley D. Merrill. Yeah. 
Jessica J. Narr, cum laude. Joni Christine Pethel, cum laude. Emily Lynn Suzanne Saylor, cum laude. Megan Elizabeth Snoke. Nathan Thomas Spring. Taylor Michelle Swingle. Brooke Elaine Temple. Shujal Tin, cum laude. Summer Denise Washington, magna cum laude. Maria Sil C. Wilkos, magna cum laude. Bachelor of Sport and Lifestyle Studies. Autumn Lynn Ridgeway. <laughs> Mallory Lynn Trout. <laughs> Bachelor of Social Work. Paige Nicole Carpenter. Kendra Marie Cosgrave, magna cum laude. <laughs> Carolyn Elaine Christ. <laughs> Madison Nicole Fleming. Taylor Jordan German. Nicole Lynn Hepner. Blair Whitney Jones. Nicholas Andrew Lyons, cum laude. Lauren Elizabeth Roth. Brianna Jo Smith Williams. Shelby Lynn Wall, cum laude. <laughs> Tiffany L. Warren. Sarah A. West. Bachelor of Specialized Studies, Matthew Joseph Hackley. <laughs> Associate of Arts in Applied Science in Child Development, Stella Viola Wheeler. <laughs> Associate of Arts, Skylar Bruce Goodnight.
Randy Lee Six. Associate of Science, Joshua Evan Doudna. <laughs> Terry Lynn Frame. <laughs> Ryan Allen Reynolds. I invite Charles Savage back to the podium. As Charles approaches the podium, please rise for the singing of the alma mater. The words are printed at the bottom of the first page of your program. Charles, please be seated. Graduates, the smiles on your faces and the accolades from your family and friends in the audience throughout this evening amplify the sense of pride your faculty, staff, and administration have in you. There is one other group to which we must give special thanks, our faculty. Our distinguished faculty advised you, taught you, and guided you throughout your degree programs, and accompanied, accompanied you every step of the way on your educational journey. I ask our faculty to stand and be recognized. We also need to thank our staff in student services, financial aid, academic advisors, and library staff who all assisted you in completing your studies and arriving at this important day. We also thank our facilities and safety staff, information technology department, and our administrative support staff who attended to the details to make this evening special for you and your family. Would our staff please rise to be recognized? We must also thank our faculty marshals for the 2019 convocation, Dr. Susan Dowell and Dr. Shadi Abu Baker. Our student marshals, Rachel Bowserman and Peyton Durth, and the members of the Convocation Committee for your valuable service. Would you please stand and be recognized? <laughs> Finally, 
We want to show our appreciation for the lovely music provided by the Zanesville Memorial Concert Band and Professor Charles Savage, and we thank Jennifer Lively for the sign language interpreting. Please stand so that we may acknowledge their contributions for this special evening. While graduation is seen as an end of accomplishing one's goals, commencement is more appropriately a beginning of things to come. Graduates, whether you completed your degree requirements entirely at the Zanesville campus or took coursework on any of the other regional campuses or the Athens campus, your Ohio University degree is recognized throughout the nation and the world. As such, your possibilities for influencing your neighborhood, your community, your state, your country, and your world are truly endless. On behalf of the faculty, staff, and administration, I wish you all the best as you begin the next chapter of your lives. We hope you will stay in touch, and please keep us posted on your accomplishments. Thank you all for being here tonight to share in this joyous occasion. As the recessional begins, please stand and remain standing until all the graduates have exited. And now, please rise.